to talk about annihilating anger. So anger is simply this, a strong feeling of annoyance, displeasure, or hostility. That's what anger is, a strong feeling of annoyance, displeasure, or hostility. Now listen to what psychology today has to say about anger. You know the feeling. It's that rage you get when someone cuts you off on the highway. How many have ever experienced that before? All right. On the way to church today, right? Cut you off on the highway. You just want to floor it and flip the bird. Let's just, come on, come on, let's just be really honest. And some people get told they're number one all the time, right? Anger is a corrosive, listen to this, anger is a corrosive emotion that can run off with your mental and physical health. So do you hold it in or do you let it all out? That's the question. Some people think, well, you just need to hold on to that because if you let it, well, if you don't let, if you don't let it out, your, your head's going to pop off your shoulders, right? But if you let it all out, someone's going to get hurt, someone's going to get mad, and there's destruction on the other side. And it says this, anger doesn't dissipate just because you unleash it. I'm going to say that again. Anger doesn't dissipate just because you unleash it. You may feel better at the moment by letting it all out, but what happens is you will also leave a trail of destruction behind you. Now, in the Bible, if you're you're looking it up in different versions, in the New Living Testament alone, uh, New Living Testament uh, translation, uh, anger is mentioned over 300 times in the Bible. It's a huge topic. Now, it can range from God's anger. How many love God to make God angry? Yeah, I don't think so, Tim. I don't think so. The Bible mentions anger over 300 times in the New, in the New, New Living Translation. And here's just a few. A gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. That's in Proverbs 15.1. Proverbs 29, 11, it says, Fools vent their anger, but the wise quietly hold it back. Uh, Proverbs 29, 22 says, An angry person starts fights. A hot-tempered person commits all kinds of sin. Notice that. It's connected to anger. Proverbs 14, 29, People with understanding control their anger a hot temper shows great foolishness how many have ever lost their temper you have lost it right this is a crazy one right here proverbs 19 3 this will make you think people ruin their lives by their own foolishness and then are angry at the lord that one grabbed a hold of me this week People ruin their lives by their own foolishness, and then they're angry at the Lord for the position that they're in. Proverbs 22, 24, it says this, Don't even befriend angry people or associate with hot-tempered people. Now, how many know that even Jesus got angry? We don't like to think it. We like to think of Jesus as sitting down and there's children and there's lambs and lions and just all the pretty, and there's little violins playing and their little flute. You know, we like to think of Jesus like this, but friends, he got angry. He got angry. And we see that in John chapter 2. John chapter 2, verse 13, it says this, It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration, so Jesus went to Jerusalem. And in the temple area, he, Jesus, saw merchants that were selling cattle, sheep, and doves for sacrifices. So so get this, people were coming in all over for the Passover, and instead of people being there, to sacrifice for their sins and for the sins of their family and stuff like that. They like 
we're going to the marketplace. We're going to make some cash because we're going to Sizzla later, right? And so here they were. They've got all the, 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 the rows laid out. They've got doves. They've got all the things for sacrifice, but they were there to make money. And I guarantee you, they were upcharging. It's all the hidden fees, right? All the, all the hidden things. Well, listen, this, this, uh, this, this bull just had the, the horns, you know, really detangled. I don't know. You know, all these different uh, they, they, There's all kinds of hidden things. They were upgrading the charge. They were overcharging people. That was, the issue was not, hey, can I buy a bull so I, can, so I can do a sacrifice? Because people had to get it from someplace. But the problem is they, were, they set up shop right in the temple courts where they're supposed to be praising, where they're supposed to be in awe. They're supposed to be, be, be reflection. So Jesus saw all this going on. He saw the dealers at the table. And so Jesus, in verse 15, made a whip from ropes and chased them all out of the temple. He drove out the sheep and the cattle, scattered the money changers, coins all over the floor, and turned over their tables. Then going over to the people who sold doves, he said, get these things out of here and stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. Now, what you have to do is don't just read over Scripture. Look into, this was premeditated anger. What does it say? How do you know? Well, because it says that Jesus made a whip. He had to go someplace he had to get it all together. He had to sit down and weave it all together. That, I don't know about you, but that had to take some time. And then he went and chased them all out. Now think about that. Has anyone ever worked with cattle before? Years ago when we were in Pittsfield, Illinois, we got our induction into the Country Music Hall of Fame, and I had to dean whore cattle and castrate bulls. All right? It ain't funny. It, ain't, it is nothing you ever want to do ever any time in your entire life ever again. But they would run all these cattle uh, through this big, big tunnel of steel, and when they would get to the end, they would just poke their heads out. These bars would come through and clamp down so that it would hold their heads so they could take off, take off the, the horns so they wouldn't gore one another. So you had to get up there and do all that. Friends, can I tell you, Trying to, to get all the, that, those cattle in a controlled environment was difficult enough. But Jesus, let me tell you that something. This was premeditated anger. He was angry for what was going on in his father's house. So he was running around like a madman, throwing over tables, getting people out of here, and hitting things. Oh, well, Jesus shouldn't act like that. Friends, there's a, there's a difference between zeal for the house of God or uh, righteous, what we call righteous indignation and just losing your marbles just for the sake of losing your marbles because someone made your latte wrong. Are you with me here today? We get mad over the dumbest, the dumbest things in Ephesians. See, anger is not, anger in itself is not a sin because we get angry at things all the time, things that bother us, things that sticks to us like glue. I will tell you, in and of itself, anger is just an emotion. It's what you do with that emotion that can turn it into sin. And the Bible gives us specific instructions how to, how to kick this thing and annihilate anger right out. And, it's, and we're going to come back to this verse several different times. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and 27, it says this, In your anger, do not sin. So it's saying, we're going to get angry. We're going to get angry at work. We're going to get frustrated at work. We're gonna, someone's going to do something wrong. Someone's not going to do something that they were supposed to do, right? So in your anger, do not sin. And then it says this, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. So in other words, you're going to get angry. But before the sun goes down that day, deal with it. Don't wait till tomorrow because it can escalate in your mind. Or, listen, or you can fail to deal with something that gets corrected. And I've been, I've been so guilty of that. 
I have been so guilty of, you know what, I, I'm too angry right now, and I, I, and I know if I deal with it right now, then I'm going to end up offending other people when I should have just calmed myself down, prayed in the Holy Spirit, and allowed God to uh, pick up the phone and let's, let's, let's meet, let's talk about this, and this is what you did, this is, not, this is what I don't want you to do now. And let's just be right, but do it that day. The Bible says, if you let that sun go down on your wrath and you're mad, you are giving. Look at it. You give, not the devil take. You give the devil a foothold. Can someone tell me what a foothold is? Here, get down on the floor. Come on. Grab my foot. You know what a foothold is? Grabbing a foothold. Good gravy. All right? When the devil's got a hold of your foot, you're not going to be able to progress or move around like you should. But what happens is now, the Word of God also says, you shall put Satan under your feet. I was getting ready to stomp on you. All right, thank you very much. What are you laying down in church for? What's wrong with you? Good job, good job. You give the devil a foothold. You, you controlled that right there. When you allow your anger to go to a place and you don't deal with it that day, and maybe it is you need to apologize for losing your anger. And I will tell you this, I have known husbands and wives that they won't speak to to each other for days and even weeks at a time. Can I tell you, you're allowing the enemy to grab a hold of your spouse because you are giving them the keys to your household right there. You are allowing the devil to come in and have a foothold now in your marriage that you gave to him. Don't give the devil a foothold. You give it to him. He doesn't take it. Man, I'll tell you what, that's good preaching right there. I don't care what anyone says. (laughs) But let's look at one more story in the Bible. In Genesis chapter 4, Genesis chapter 4, let's look at this. It's a story about anger. It says this, Genesis chapter 4, verse 3. When it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord, and Abel, his brother, also brought a gift, the best of the firstborn lambs of his flock. And the Bible says this, that the Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain very angry, and he looked dejected. So, was was God not, did, did, he, did, he, did he not like his vegetables in that day? Is that what it was all about? He just wanted some Angus? Is that, that what, it wasn't about feeding God. It wasn't about feeding God. It was about what was going on in the heart. And if you will notice, and I don't want to get caught up on this, but if you will go back to verse 3, you can see the distinction of both gifts, and it has nothing to do with the content. It has nothing to do with uh, uh, the crops as opposed to the, 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 the lamb or, or whatever it was, the best of the, fir- the flock. It had to do with Verse 3 and verse 4. Verse 3 said, Cain presented some of his crops. There's the difference as opposed to verse 4. Abel brought the best of the firstborn lambs of his flock. There was a difference between a first fruit and just getting a little something together and just throwing it out. It had to do with what God wanted. And that's what he desires for us is to give our first fruits. So let's pull this apart. I want us to to look at some anger truths here this morning. Anger truths. How many, let's just be honest in this place. Who's already been angry today? We got some some folks, 
angry. And how many would probably anticipate that you're going to get angry this afternoon, especially when your football team loses, Cincinnati? All right. So, hey, hey, we're in the house of the Lord. We're not going to have any of that. <laughs> All right. So, some anger truths. Number one is this. Anger has no poker face. Anger has no poker face. Look at it. In Genesis chapter 4, verses, uh, verse 6, it says this. God asked Cain, why are you so angry, the Lord asked Cain. Why do you look so dejected? Have you ever met someone that's angry and you just walked in and you knew they were angry just by the very expression on their face? And they're trying their best to hold it in, but it's almost like they're getting ready to blow a gasket, right? And like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, don't press too hard, you know, you never know what's going to happen there. Their, their, their facial expression is, is in such a, a contorted way that everybody can see it. And it's not just a facial expression, it, is, it's, it creates an atmosphere in the room. Have you ever walked into a room and you're lobby da di da and next thing you know, you walked into something and you're like, what in the world is in here? You can tell there's an atmosphere. Friends, can I tell you, that comes from the spirit of, uh, of situations and the spirit of people that they carry upon themselves. That should be so evident that we have got to do things right before the Lord. Hello? And there's even Christians Christians walk into church and their face is just so, ah, I've come to praise the Lord, right? I don't know if that's going to work, but hey, at least you're here, right? It says this in, in Proverbs 21, verse 29. It says, a wicked man hardens his face, but as for the upright, God establishes his way. He hardens his face. There's so much truth in that. So the anger truth, number one, is anger has no poker face. But the second one is this. Anger will always reject the warning. Have you ever tried to talk sense into someone who's angry and they ain't going to listen? They're going to do what they're going to do. Hello? They're going to do exactly what they're going to And it doesn't matter how many scriptures you like. And I will tell you this. When someone is angry and you try to roll out uh, God's you know, plan of plan of the you know ten commandments for them and everything all it's going to do it's going to escalate why because they're not answering the door because with the holy spirit residing within us within the life of a, of a believer he's already been knocking the, at the door of your heart anyway we're just refusing to answer the door come on that's good right there you see anger will always reject the warning look at this genesis chapter 4 we're going to pull apart this cain and abel thing right so Genesis chapter 4, verse 7, you will be accepted. Remember, God accepted, uh, 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 God accepted Abel, but he rejected Cain. And now God's like, hey, why does your face look like that? You know, you look dumb. Come on, help, help, help me out here. Smile a little bit. And then he said this, you will be accepted if you do what is right. He is now talking. He is... <laughs> My wife is texting in church, and it just showed up on the iPad. Busted! I'm angry. That makes me so angry. <laughs> so he's referring to the gift. He's telling him over here, you and your gift are going to be accepted if you do what is right. But listen to this. But if you refuse to do what is right, boy, this is, this is crazy. Watch out for sin is crouching at your door, eager to control you, but you must subdue it and be your master. God is giving Cain a warning right here and right now. He's warning him, listen, if you'll do this over here, it's going to be accepted. But if you don't, sin is crouching at your door. Listen, if you've got someone crouching around the sides of your house, 
They're up to no good right now, I'm telling you right now. They're trying to hide. That's what sin does. Sin tries to hide itself, and then all of a sudden it takes hold of you, and then there's all sorts of no good that happens. You see, anger will always reject the warning, and that's what God was doing. Him, God himself, that's what's crazy about them. The spirit of the living God was speaking to Cain directly, and he said, listen, you're going to be accepted. You're going to be accepted, but if not, if you choose to, and see, God already knew what he was getting ready to do. Sin is crouching at your door. God already gives the warning, but anger will always reject the warning. James chapter 1, verse 19, it says, Understand this, my brothers and sisters, you must be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. For human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. Right there, that's a warning. God's telling us right there of what we are supposed to do. Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to get angry. And it gives us the expression at the end. Human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. So, truth two, anger will always reject the warning. Truth three, anger schemes. Right? How many times have you been angry? You're like, all of a sudden you're loading up that gun with the silver bullets and you're getting ready to kill the werewolf right there. And you got, oh, this silver bullet right here. The next time they say this, I'm going to say this. And you slip one right into the chamber. Hello? No, it's a resolver. I heard something that they were, you're, you know, cocking the Glock. No, no. Oh, there you go. No, that was a resolver. But I was putting in there. All right? Anger schemes. So look at this, Genesis 4, verse 8. Notice what the Word of God says, one day. It wasn't the next day, it wasn't the day that he was angry, but one day. So God warned, he got angry because God rejected him and his stuff. He was jealous of his brother, and now all of a sudden, God comes down and he says, listen, son, you better get this right. So now, after time has passed, you see, this has been planning around in his head for a while. He'd been scheming this for a while. He'd been letting this stew in him a while, and it's angry. You see, people can be angry, and what I and it can be quiet anger. They're just sitting on it. They're just brewing. Something's brewing. Something's stirring. Maybe someone comes in the room, and they don't even, they're not really angry, but they have something, they have something, as my wife would say, snarky to say to someone else. Snarky, that's a new word. You got something, you don't have something to good, good to say about anything, any situation, and you can just tell. They don't necessarily appear that they're mad, but something's going on inside. Something's going on. You see, anger always schemes. And one day Cain suggested to his brother, let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. You see, this was one day later. Not one day later. This is a day that, just one day. You see, he'd been scheming that. Something that had been building up in his heart. Remember, sin was crouching now at his door, waiting to control him. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and 27, it says, And don't sin by letting anger control you. And here it is again. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. There it is. There it is again. You see, when you start scheming, you've already let him in the door. When you start scheming, when you start planning, when you start, well, the next time they say this, I'm going to say that. When you already got the, the scripts, the manuscript already typed out and ready to go, when you've got all the things that you're going to do and you're going to put your car in this spot, and I've watched, I've watched stuff on YouTube about crazy neighbors and the stuff that they do in the video cameras and kicking dirt on their side with crazy things. It's the scheming that goes along. And all really what that is, that's the devil manifesting himself through you. See, no one likes to hear that. No one's amen anymore, but that's all right. Anger truth number four. Anger tries to cover its tracks. Hello? Anger tries to cover its tracks. 
Afterward, the Lord in verse Genesis chapter 4, verse 9, afterward the Lord asked Cain, where is your brother? Where's Abel? Well, I don't know, Cain responded. Am I my brother's guardian? He's talking to the creator of man's very first breath. He breathed life into his daddy's body and removed a rib from his daddy's rib cage and made the woman. He's talking to the creator of the universe. Am I my brother's keeper? Oh, my word. That's crazy. It's a wonder God didn't just destroy him right there. Let me tell you something. We, if we were God, half the population of the world would be gone right now. Hello? Right? They'd probably be having the congregation gone too. Right? You call bears, bears came out of the bathroom and ate the bald man, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> you see, anger tries to cover his tracks, and that's exactly what Cain was doing. Cain was going in, and he was like, he was trying to cover everything that he did. But God already knew. God, God already knew. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, and I like how it says this in the New King James Version. It says this, But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully because you can twist God's word and make it say what you want it to say. Hello? But by, manis- the, by, by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame. We try to hide stuff. We try to hide stuff from, from God. We try to hide stuff from our spouse. We try to hide things from our bosses. We try to hide things from the government. Hello, taxes, right? People do that all the time. Try to hide stuff. Hello? Anger tries to cover its tracks. Now, here's the scary part. Anger truth number five. Anger will destroy your destiny. Anger will destroy your destiny. Look at Genesis chapter 4, verse 10. So remember, Cain and Abel brought the sacrifices. Cain wasn't uh, wasn't accepted. God gave him a warning. All of a sudden, the scheming started taking place. He went out and killed his brother. He tried to cover his tracks. And now, his destiny is altered because it started with anger. But the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground and it says this, now. Up until that point, his destiny was on track. But now that he made these choices out of anger, out of something he did, now his entire destiny is changed because of it. What does it say? Now you are cursed and banished from the ground. You are cursed and banished from the ground. The very ground that has swallowed your own brother's blood. No longer will the ground yield good crops for you, no matter how hard you work, for from now on you will be a homeless wanderer on earth. Here He was with the manifest presence of God, but now because of choices that he made in his heart not being right and anger ruling and reigning in his life, now the destiny that God had planned, it's taken an alternate route. His choices created an alternate route away from the presence of the Lord. Man, I hope someone's getting that today. Genesis chapter 7, verse 9. It says this, Control your temper, for anger labels you a fool. Anger labels you a fool. Listen to this. 
All right, so I'm just going to give you a quick example of how anger labeled me a fool. I was in the United States Air Force. I was in Airman Leadership School, which means I had been promoted to staff sergeant, but I had to go through training uh, to make sure I knew all the ins and outs. And I was actually the, the highest ranking senior airman, so I was the leader of the whole class. There's like 120 people divided into uh, four different groups. I was in charge of them all. So every day I had to do everything like I was the commander of all these uh, other airmen. So we'd have PT, and every day we'd run. Uh, but Friday was like a, a, what do you call that, chef's choice. So you get to pick whatever. Since I was a leader, I got to pick. And, you know, we're like, oh, yeah, my boys want to do this or whatever. So that day we played basketball. And if any of you know me, I'm pretty competitive. So, and let me just give you a little bit of backstory. There was a guy in my group who was just that guy that just doesn't ever shut up. Every decision I made was, oh, you know, he's rolling his eyes or telling somebody I would have done it better. He just always had a better plan. He just didn't want to be like number 17. He wanted to be number one. So we're playing basketball, and it's competitive. It's getting hot and heated out there. And he felt like he got fouled. And he's complaining, saying some words at the court. And he comes by, by me, and he's like, and I'm like, what's your problem? And he's like, I got beeping fouled. And it was right in my face. And before I knew it, I turned and just clocked him. Clocked him. I mean, like right in front of everybody, all of the people. And I lost my mind. Like I snapped. Like if anybody's ever been angry before and you go to the, that place that you, it's hard to get back from, I was just ready. I mean, it didn't matter. You know, Samson could have walked in there. I was fighting him. Anybody, I was just ready. I was squared up. I clocked him. I'm looking for somebody else that wants to talk now. You know, I listened to this guy for so long, but I lost my mind. I just flipped that switch. And I mean, literally, I'm looking around and saying things that I shouldn't have been saying at that time. And don't you know there was a, a senior master sergeant, which is the second highest enlisted rank, came up. I didn't even know him. Grabbed me from behind. I mean, I'm like, I'm ready to fight. You ever been in that place? Big old dude just grabbed me up, and I couldn't really move, um, even though I was angry. But I was just, and I heard him say, I'm a senior. You know, and that was like, that clicked the switch in my head, like, okay, <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I've already gone too far. And that was the voice that kind of, oh, my goodness, now what am I going to do, fight this guy too? Not only will I lose, but I'll probably, you know, lose rank. So don't you know that that happened? And all the people that had egged me on and said, and this guy's always talking smack and all this kind of stuff, they were on my side. Well, every week, at the end of the week, you have to do peer ratings, and every week I had great ratings, like out of five. It's usually like 4.78 out of five. There's always that one person that gives you, you know, a three no matter what. It's like Google reviews. And that week I was assured everybody wanted me to get this guy, and I got him. Well, don't you know my reviews were very low. Low. All those people that egged me on were, they rated me low. It was embarrassment. I had to come show my face after PT, shower change, and go back. So now my leadership and my reputation is under question because I acted a fool. I thought I was doing everybody a favor by knocking this guy down. Don't you know that they were, they saw that and they labeled me a fool. And it took me a long time to get that reputation back. You see, anger can alter a course. Notice what he said. He was good Good, good reports, everything, and now it's because of one, and we all do it, and we all ha handle anger in a different way. But for him, it caused there to be a few steps back now, and now he's got to gain some more trust. I handled anger, especially in my younger days, I was the same way. I would deal with my anger by hitting things. How many, how many hitting things people do we have here when you get angry? Right? One of the worst arguments we ever had, I was sick. I had about a 102 degree temperature. And my wife decided that day that she wanted to strip the wallpaper in our bedroom that day because she had some people coming over. Well, I had to go. I had to rent a steamer. I had to, do, you know, because back then, it went, so as we got into it, it was three layers of wallpaper and two layers of paint, and it was that old wood lath plaster, that whole thing. 
and we had just bought a brand new TV. Well, back then, you know, a brand new TV that was just like that was a lot of money back then. It was sitting on the little deal. And all of a sudden, because I didn't want to do it, I'm sick, right? When you're sick, you don't want you don't want to steam wallpaper. Hello? Take notes right there. If you're sick, you don't want to steam wallpaper. And so now, so now all of a sudden, she trips over a cord and our brand new television, bam, falls face ground. And I was so angry. I just, I couldn't control it. And then all of a sudden, she says those words that, that every man loves to hear. She referred back to an old girlfriend that I don't even hardly remember her name. Well, if so-and-so would have done it. You wouldn't have gotten mad at her. Oh, my word. I turned around and I, wham, put my hand through that old plaster and all that wood busted through and there were nails sticking up about like that. So here I am. I'm a pastor. Little did I know I broke my hand by hitting that wall and I had to lead worship that next Sunday morning. So I get up and I, there ain't no way, there ain't no way that I'm going to get a cast on my hand. There's no way. And so at that particular church, and as a matter of fact, Rick and Ina were at that church. It, 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 you remember that? They were at that church. And so I, it, Scott was there. He was in the youth group. Good gravy. So here we are. I'm trying to lead worship. And I play the drums. I don't know what I was doing, but... I had broken my hand because I, out of my anger, my uncontrolled anger, and now I've got to go to the door and shake every person's hand that goes through, and I'm right-handed. And so, and of course, the guys in that church are like, come on, pastor, give it to me. <laughs> and so I am cringing. I am I'm seething in pain. And so now... The pastor sees, what's going on? What's wrong with your hand? Oh, oh, nothing. I was, and I lied to my pastor. <laughs> Remember, anger schemes, anger trying to cover it. I lied to my pastor, and I said this. I'm a horrible liar, right? I said this. Oh, I was shadow boxing, and I turned around, and I hit the wall on accident. Who comes up with that? No one does that. I had to go get a cast on my hand and lead worship for nearly six weeks with my hand in a cast. And the expression of my anger was on my hands that entire time. Later on, how did I express my anger? I, I, well, I'm not going to hit anything, so I'm going to kick it. That always works. Go downstairs and kick this big wood thing downstairs, but I didn't realize there's a cast iron pipe on the other side of that. An immediate sprang my ankle. So then I get a little bit smarter. We went to Pittsfield and I happened to deal with, with you know, the Wake Forest team, okay? The Demon Deacons. Okay, so I, I was there. Some of you are going to get these things. Somebody just goes right over your head. Wake Forest, they're called the Demon Deacons. All right, never mind. So anyway, dealing with just some craziness there. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go to the best sporting goods store, and I'm going to get a big body bag, you know, just one of those big things, and I'm going to go at it. So I'm going downstairs in my basement, and little did I know, some words are coming out of my mouth that I shouldn't. I'm a pastor. I'm angry at a situation, and I look out of the corner of my eye, and I came around, and I hit the bag, and my son's standing there watching me, and I'm kicking this thing and hit, and I curled my wrist up underneath. If you ever hit that, and your wrist curls up underneath, hurt my wrist again, and immediately the Holy Spirit told me. Oh, he spoke to me right there, Pastor. And he said, you're going to get hurt every time you try to take matters into your own. You see, all of us deal with anger in, in different ways. Some of them are good, but some of them are not so good. And I just want to very quickly, how, uh, how you annihilate anger in yourself. The first one is this, fast, pray, and worship. I will tell you this, anger will not, now you may be hangry, right? Right? But when you fast, it pulls that flesh, it destroys that flesh 
within you when you begin to fast, when you begin to pray, and you begin to worship. That's my first suggestion. If you've got a, a problem with anger and how you deal with things, fast, pray, and worship. Number two, I'm going to tell you this, work out. These are just some practical applications right there. When you work out, when you get on a, an elliptical, which I cannot do for some reason, it hurts my legs. I don't know why, John. I don't know what the deal is. But if you will go to the gym and you'll exert some sort of energy, some people can work out. Roy Mullins, that man, he's outside mowing. He's cutting down trees. He's doing all kinds. Now, I'm not saying he's angry, right? But work out in some sort of a, a, a form of uh, just do, get some exercise going. Number three, and I will tell you this, this one right here, a lot of the ladies aren't going to agree with me on this, but just stick with me. Number three, how do you annihilate anger in yourself? Number three, walk away with the intention to walk back. Now listen, ladies will say that is a feeling of rejection, and rightly so. But I will tell you this, sometimes it's better to walk away because what you're getting ready to unleash out of your mouth or do is... <laughs> It's not very good. So you need to take a couple steps. Go walk around the block and tell your spouse, tell the situation, whatever it is, you need to tell them, listen, I'm going to walk around the block and then I'm going to come back. I'm going to cool down. You walk away with the intention to walk back. Because I will tell you, if you just walk away and you never return, then you're going to have more problems than what, you know. My pastor said this, don't store up more demons than that you can whoop. Right? Number four, how to... How to annihilate anger in yourself. Practical application. Number four is simply this. Just get some counseling. Get some counseling. Well, I don't want people to think I'm crazy. Friends, that day is over. Everybody already knows you're crazy. Right? Yeah. See, y'all laugh when I wasn't trying to be funny. You see, the days of going to counseling and stuff like that, people are like, well, I don't want people to think I'm weird. Can I tell you, I have had to go to counseling. There's been situations within this congregation and family situations that I have lit I've had to go because the workout wasn't working, right? Fasting and praying should have worked, but I was holding on to it myself. I just needed someone to talk to. Get some counseling. I want to give you just real quick right here, and we're, we're going to wrap this thing up. Oh, my word, it's quarter till. How to annihilate anger in other people. How to diffuse a situation. Would you like to know how to do that? Number one is, is, is this, just disengage. Dis, disengage from that situation. And you can disengage the wrong way, too. You can walk away and pfft, right? Or you can just quietly just disengage from that scenario and that situation. Listen to this. Three young men hopped on a bus in Detroit in the 1930s and tried to pick a fight with a lone man sitting in the back of the vehicle. They insulted him. He didn't respond. They turned up the heat of the insults. He said nothing. Eventually, the stranger stood up, and he was much bigger than they had anticipated from his seat position. He was much bigger, and he reached into his pocket. Well, we all know what's going to happen next, right? He reached into his pocket and handed them his business card, and he walked off the bus and then on his way. As the bus drove on, uh, the young men gathered around uh, the car to read the words, Joe Lewis Boxer. They had just tried to pick a fight with the man who would be the heavyweight boxing champion of the world from 1937 to 1949. The number one boxer of all time. Now listen. He could have put the hurt, but he quietly disengaged. You can diffuse something by just disengaging. Number two is simply this. Shut up and listen. 
You get people so many trying to talk someone out of their anger, and sometimes people just need to slowly let that out. Shut up and listen. I'm just giving you practical application here, okay? Shut up and listen. Number three, ask questions instead of making statements. Ask questions instead of making statements. And number four, if you want to, if you want to annihilate anger in someone else, a situation, apologize and accept responsibility. Apologize and accept responsibility. Why is it? Why is it so difficult to do that thing right there that everyone it just it just resonated through the room? Why is it so difficult? Why? Because the devil, you have given him a foothold. And he doesn't want you to apologize or accept responsibility. Sometimes you apologize because the outcome of peace is greater than you just being right. Because we all want to be right all the time. I leave you with two scriptures. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Now I want you to pay attention to this. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, Bits of rage. He throws in losing your mind in anger with witchcraft, with sexual morality, with hatred, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. He throws fits of rage and anger in with this great melting pot of detestable sins and then it says this and this is the scary part right here I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God well he's talking to the world no he wrote this to the church of Galatia. I warn you. I warn you who are in the church. You are losing your mind and allowing sin to go on and drunkenness and all these things. Fits of rage. If you live like this, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. That right there is a hot cup of coffee. That's an eye opener right there. You see, as much as God has a plan, the devil has a plan too. And his plan is to steal, kill, and destroy. And ultimately, drag you and every single person that he possibly can to an eternity in hell with him we've got to ax and annihilate anger we've got to take that out we've got to remove these things and allow once again the Holy Spirit to move things are going to frustrate you friends things are going to frustrate you things will make you angry you can't help but turn on the television and the news and things make you angry all the time can I tell you, how about turn the television off and listen to the Word of God? If you're finding your emotions getting out of place, then turn off the trigger. Remove the trigger. Disengage.